Okay, so in this talk, we're going to talk about agent cognition. And agent cognition is the process by which agents examine their own properties in the world around them and then make a decision about what actions to take. And before you construct your model, you need to think about how cognitive, how, 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 much, how complex is the cognition of my agents going to be, right? What level of cognition should the agents have, right? And the more complex the contagion, uh, sorry, the cognition, the more computational effort may be required, but potentially the more realistic the model, right? So it could be that if you add more and more cognition, the agents are more like real thinking in human beings or, or wolves or sheep or whatever. But that's not necessarily always the case, by the way. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking a lot here of some of the classical economic models, which posit, for instance, that humans consider all information and then have infinite time to compute the best solution, which it would be a very complex agent cognition, right? But it's not necessarily the most realistic. Most humans actually make decisions on heuristics or rules of thumb, right? Um, so that's one example of where um, agent cognition, um, even if it's very complex, may not be the most realistic, right? Um, I, uh, my, the first AI book I ever had, artificial intelligence book I ever had, was a book uh, by Russell and Norvig, um, and, uh, it actually defines these uh, four types of agent cognition. Uh, and so I wanted to, I'm, I'm going to use that same category uh, to talk about the four types I'm going to talk about today. So the first type is what we call reflexive agents or reflex agents, right? And these are agents uh, that simply just act very simply, right? Then we have utility based agents. These are agents that try and uh, maximize the utility function. Goal-based agents, they try to achieve a goal. Uh, and then adaptive agents. And adaptive agents are agents that can actually not only change uh, their decisions, but actually change their strategies. And we talked a little bit about them before. So reflexive agents or reflex agents, they follow very simple rules uh, where agents simply react to what is around them, right? And these are often represented by if-then rules, right? So many of the agent models that we've looked at are in this space, right? So like the flocking model says, if you're about to hit a bird, step away from it, right? Avoid it, right? Um, and that's an example of a reflex agent because it's almost like a reflex like the human body has, right? Um, and I'll show you an example in the car in traffic, ba traffic basic model now. Hello everyone, and now I'm going to show you an example of the uh, traffic basic model which shows how to build a reflex agent. Uh, so I haven't mentioned this much before, but except a couple times, that almost all the models that you're going to be using in this class are available in the models library under a folder called IABM textbook model. And under that you'll see chapter 5, which corresponds to unit 5 of this class. Uh, and most of the models are under there. Now, unfortunately, the ones that aren't under there are the ones that are part of the standard models library, that they existed before the textbook existed. And in this case, the traffic basic model is one of those. Now, we'll come back to the section in the next uh, little clip of demos because I'm going to show you one of the other traffic basic models. But right now, let's go up to social science. Um, and then if we go down, we can find traffic basic. Right? Uh, and by the way, you can always find all these models by just searching for them by typing traffic, right? Okay. So we're going to click on Traffic Basic and open it up. And this model is very simple, if you remember correctly. So you basically just have these cars. They're moving in a one-dimensional line, and they accelerate until they see a car in front of them, and then they decelerate, right? Um, and the reflex rule is really well captured. And let me blow up this code a little bit. But the reflex rule is really well captured by this go procedure, right? Okay. So in the go procedure, you know, the reflex rule is described right here in the documentation as it should be. If there's a car right ahead of you, match its speed, then slow down. Otherwise, speed up. Don't slow down below the minimum speed or speed up beyond the speed limit, right? So as I said, reflex rules are often in the forms if then, and this one is no exception, right? So first it checks to see if there's a car ahead of it. If there is a car ahead, if there is not a car, yeah, if there is a car ahead, so in other words, if the car ahead does not equal nobody, in other words, there is a car ahead, then it's going to slow down the car, right? If there isn't a car ahead, right, then it's gonna speed up. So if car ahead, slow down. If not car ahead, speed up. And then it's just gonna modify the speeds to make sure that they don't exceed the speed limit and then move forward, right? 
Um, and that's the basic simple rule. And that's what the way a lot of reflex agents are. And that's a very powerful form of cognition. In fact, many of the models that we've seen in our examples have been reflex rules, right? They've been simple rules of the form. If this condition is met, then do this action, okay? Um, in the next kind of group, we're gonna start talking a little bit about some more advanced um, types of cogn agent cognition like utility agents. Okay, so utility-based agents are the next level of agents are, you know, these aren't necessarily strict levels, different next type of agents cognition you can have, right? And utility-based agents are agents that are attempting to maximize some utility function. Um, it often requires the agents to try different actions and then observe the outcome on the utility function uh, to see what actions they should take to maximize that utility function, right? Um, and we're going to do one in traffic basic utility where the, the basic utility function is they want to minimize the deviation from a highly fuel efficient speed, right? And so the agents are going to adapt uh, how fast they're moving basically to try and match that speed as closely as possible. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are about to look at the traffic basic uh, utility model. Right, which allows us to um, have the agents now use a utility function or a form of utility function to make a decision. So if you look down, there is a traffic basic utility model under chapter five in the IABM textbook. Again, you could have found it by typing utility. It's the only one that has that name in it, and then you can open it up, right? So here we have the model. It looks very similar to the other one um, in terms of the traffic basic model that is, um, except for the fact there's now this new slider called efficient speed. And efficient speed is supposed to be this hypothetical notion that somehow someone went out ahead of time and figured out that if a car was moving at this speed, it would uh, minimize its, uh, maximize its fuel efficiency, right? It would get the best uh, miles per gallon, right? And so all the cars are attempting to achieve that speed, right? So how do they do that? Well, if you go over and you go to the code, you go down to go, you'll see that there is now a command that says, if the car, if there is no car ahead, um, if there is a car ahead, then slow down, right? If there isn't a car ahead, then adjust the speed for efficiency, right? Um, and if you go down and look at adjust speed for efficiency, right, um, then you'll see that there is this new rule which says, if my speed does not equal my efficient speed, right, if my car is not moving at that efficient speed, then do nothing, right? Uh, so if the car is at that efficient speed, then do nothing. Um, but if accelerating will put you below, uh, keep you below the efficiency speed still, then obviously you should accelerate, right? Because that means you're not going past the efficiency. And if decelerating will keep you above the efficient speed, then decelerate, right? So you're constantly like breaking and speeding up in order to try and get toward that efficient speed, right? Now, it may be possible that given certain acceleration, deceleration numbers, you can't ever get exactly at the efficient speed. That's fine. We're just getting as close as possible to it that we can, right? Um, and of course, if, if you look at this and you pay close attention, right, the first thing says if the speed is not the efficient speed. Now, let's imagine we're just a little bit above the efficient speed, right? Then um, the acceleration will obviously not put us less than that because that will make us go even faster. And deceleration may not get us uh, above it, right, because of the fact that maybe deceleration would be too far and we go below it. In which case, we're just going to stay a little bit above, right, because nothing's going to change on our speed. So this is an example of a utility-based function because we're trying to maximize this utility of, uh, of maintaining this efficient speed. Now, this isn't written as a function, right? Because a lot of times in agent-based modeling, much like any computational modeling, we're not gonna write functions, we're gonna write uh, computational procedures, not mathematical functions, not equation-based models. We're gonna write a mathematical procedure or computational procedure that's gonna achieve the same goal as that equation-based model would, right? So you could imagine writing out an equation that says the utility of a speed is equal to the fuel efficiency, blah, 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 and then you can say, write another function that says, choose a deceleration or acceleration such that you maximize that utility, right? Essentially, that's what we're doing here, right? We just haven't written out all those equations. We've written computational logic out to express it instead. And that's the way a lot of utility-based cognitive agents work.